2020 was, for more reasons than you want me to go into here, an awful year for all of us. But even before the global health crisis grasped society in its malign snare, the world of wrestling was forced to say goodbye to a number of departing stars, a trend that, in this industry, has become tragically commonplace. Any death is, in its own personal way, a tragedy. But wrestlers touch so many lives with their work that losing any one of them can hit home as heavy as if we knew them ourselves. So let's take a few minutes to reflect on and celebrate the lives of the stars pro wrestling lost last year. My name is Adam Cleary and this is our tribute to 24 wrestlers who died in 2020. Number 24, La Parca. Jesus Alfonso Huerta Escoboza, known across Mexican wrestling as the second incarnation of La Parca, died last January from complications of a serious ring accident three months earlier. He was 54. During a show on the 21st of October 2019, Huerta misjudged a tope, resulting in his head colliding with the guardrail. He underwent life-saving surgery the next morning, but failed to fully recover from his injuries and passed away on January the 11th. Just two weeks after his death, he was posthumously inducted into AAA's Hall of Fame. Number 23, Rocky Johnson. Rocky Johnson, latterly best known as The Rock's father but a pioneering, successful African-American wrestler in his own right, died on the 15th of January in his Florida home of a pulmonary embolism. He was 75. His star was undeniable, allowing him to overcome all barriers and break them down for the generations to come. In 2008, he was inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame and his passing provoked an outpouring of tributes from across the length and breadth of the business. Number 22, Dr. Hannibal. Canadian Steve Gillespie, a journeyman who appeared in his home country, WWF and Japan, most prominently under the name Dr. Hannibal, died on the 18th of January 2020 of a heart attack. He was 56. Despite a handful of appearances in WWE, it was in Japan where Gillespie reached the height of his fame. But after calling it a day in 2013, Gillespie stayed close to the business, helping promote heart legacy wrestling in his hometown. Number 21, Justice Payne. Chris Wilson, better known to the wrestling world as former Combat Zone wrestling champion Justice Payne, passed away on the 24th of January at the age of 41. One of the stars around which CZW was built, he won the company's top title in the year 2000. However, Wilson retired from active competition in 2007 at the age of just 29. Number 20, Rip Oliver. Larry Rip Oliver died on the 5th of March at the age of 67, having entered hospice care following a series of heart attacks. Snapped up by WWE in the midst of their rapid North American expansion, his most notable moment in the company came, literally unrecognisable, under a mask as Super Ninja, flattened at the hands of Ultimate Warrior. Oliver's final match came back in PWN a few years later as he lost the top strap to Demolition Crush, himself flitting between WWE spells. Number 19, Howard Finkel. Best known as The Fink, Howard Finkel was the voice of millions of wrestling fans' childhoods. His voice was instantly recognisable the world over and he was the absolute best at what he did. However, on the 16th of April, after battling multiple health complications, his family released a statement confirming his passing. He was 69. Famously one of Vince McMahon's first permanent hires, brought in as a Madison Square Garden MC for the then WWWF in 1975, he quickly distinguished himself through his flawless delivery, rising to become the company's senior announcer. Though Fink remained a fixture of the company behind the scenes, the product never quite felt the same without him on air. He was inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame in 2009, and his legacy will never be surpassed. Number 18, Winona Littleheart. One of the fabulous Moolah's group of lady wrestlers, but best known for her own Native American gimmick, Winona Littleheart died on the 9th of May. She was 64 years old. The stepdaughter of wrestler Dick Barkley, she was raised in the business, making her debut at the age of just 20 in 1976. Within only a few years, she'd hooked up with Moolah and even challenged for the WWF women's title. She left the company in 1985 and retired just two years later. Number 17, Shad Gaspard. Several days after being swept out to sea in Venice Beach, it was confirmed by the Coast Guard that Chad Gaspard had passed away at the age of just 39. Through his final action in life, Gaspard died a hero. While swimming with his son, the pair were caught in a sudden undertow. When lifeguards came to Chad's rescue, the former wrestler instead directed them to his 10-year-old who was swiftly dragged back to shore. When rescue was then returned for him, it was too late. 
Across two spells with the company, he, along with tag partner JTG, would memorably go on to star alongside John Cena during his feud with JBL, and challenge for the tag team titles at SummerSlam 2009. Shad left WWE in 2010, after which he pursued a variety of outside interests, succeeding in just about everything he turned his hand to. He provided mocap for demigod Kratos in 2018's PS4 hit God of War, was a stunt double in box office smashes Black Panther and Birds of Prey, and even treaded the boards, assuming the lead role in a theatre biopic of the first African-American boxing champion Jack Johnson. But more important to him than any of that was the fact that he was a father. Number 16, Hana Kimura. A performer with Japanese promotion stardom and a cast member of the Netflix show Terence House, Hana Kimura passed away on the 23rd of May 2020 at the age of just 22. Reports emerged over the following days that she had taken her own life. Debuting at the age of 18, by 2019 she became a permanent fixture for stardom where she twice won the Artist of Stardom Championship and the Goddess of Stardom Championship. The promotion publicly stating their plans to make her their biggest name. However, the wrestling world was united in its grief after the news of Hannah's passing emerged, instigating a widespread condemnation on the nature of online bullying. In a touching eulogy to her close friend, Io Shirai concluded, it is so important that we all love and treat each other with respect. In her own tribute, Ronda Rousey echoed these sentiments saying, be the kindness you wish you'd received instead of the malice and neglect you're trying to pay back. Number 15, Danny Havoc. Independent wrestler Grant Birkeland, known most notably in CZW and Game Changer Wrestling as Danny Havoc, died on the 31st of May. At the age of just 34, this came less than two months after the death of his wife Brianne. Debuting in CZW in 2005, his career started very much as it would go on, as he was set on fire during the contest. From there, he emerged as a major figure within the hardcore scene. Spilling blood in Big Japan Wrestling, DDT Pro, WXW, and IWA Mid-South. He officially retired in 2017, but in good hardcore tradition, still worked the occasional show. Number 14, Rollerball Rocco. Mark Rollerball Rocco, a legend of the British wrestling scene and New Japan Pro Wrestling's original Black Tiger, died in a care home on the 30th of July at the age of 69. He had been living with dementia throughout the later stages of his life. A three-time World Heavy Middleweight Champion, William Regal composed a touching tribute to the British superstar, writing, There aren't enough words for me to explain how much it means to be fortunate enough to have known him and wrestled him. Number 13, Mitch Ryder. The passing of marvellous Mitch Ryder, a fixture of the North American independent scene since his teenage years, was announced by close friend John Ian Rotten Williams on the 6th of August. He was 48 years old. He'd briefly appear for WCW in 1992, performing jobbing duties to company stars like Rick Rude and Mick Foley, but also opened his own outfit, XWC Midwest, in 2007. In addition to promoting, he also trained a crop of the next generation of stars, amongst them Chris Hero, Lince Dorado, and Drew Gulak. Number 12, Kamala. The Ugandan giant Kamala might seem retrograde by today's standards, but James Harris put so much craft and effort into the gimmick that he became one of the most marketable heels of the 1980s. The apex of a run which comprised Memphis, WCCW, and Mid-South saw Harris stare down Hulk Hogan for his WWF World Heavyweight Championship. Of course, he never had a chance of winning it, but that hardly mattered. There was no better position to be in than opposite WWE's Golden Goose. Harris his later life was dogged by health issues and in early August he contracted COVID-19 during one of his weekly dialysis treatments. He passed away a few days later following a cardiac arrest. He was 70 years old. Number 11, Xavier. The list of former Ring of Honor champions reads like a who's who of the industry over the past 10 years. But while the second ever title holder, Johnny Xavier Bedoya, never reached the same mainstream heights as his peers, his contribution to Ring of Honor nevertheless helped create the platform from which they could launch. Featuring in the promotion's first ever show, he was soon rewarded with a run with the belt, holding it for five months before dropping it to the emerging Samoa Joe. Although he retired from the industry in 2016, he was set to appear at the then cancelled Ring of Honor comeback show last year. Tragically though, on the 16th of August, news of his death was announced at the age of just 43. Number 10, Bob Armstrong. Bullet Bob Armstrong, scion of the famed Armstrong wrestling family and an NWA star for nearly three decades, died on the 27th of August following a battle with cancer. He was 80 years old. 
For nearly 30 years, he was a mainstay of the Southeast scene before hanging up his boots in 1988. As popular as he was though, arguably his biggest contribution to the business was the four sons he raised. Scott settling into a WWE referee role, Brad was a bona fide star of the NWA, Steve enjoyed spells in New Japan, WWE and WCW, while Brian rose to mainstream fame during the Attitude Era as the Road Dog. In recent years though, he developed cancer and after it spread, he refused treatment. He was preceded in death by his wife Vida Gale, who passed away in June. Number 9. Rick Drazin Famed bodybuilder Rick Drazen, who also tried his considerable hand at wrestling and stunt work, died on the 30th of August whilst hospitalised with kidney problems. He was 76 years old. Though the most indelible legacy he likely leaves behind is his logo design for Gold's Gym, which still adorns fitness facilities across the world, Drazin left a mark on every profession he turned to. As a wrestler, he stomped around rings for the best part of four decades, terrorising babyfaces on the West Coast as the Equaliser, and briefly turning out for WWE in the 1980s. Number 8. Road Warrior Animal Joseph Laurinaitis, one half of the legendary tag team which dominated every promotion they visited during the 80s and 90s, passed away of a sudden heart attack on the 22nd of September. He was 60. After an unassuming debut in 1982 as just the Road Warrior, Paul Ellering saw potential and signed him up to his new Georgia Championship wrestling stable known as the Legion of Doom. He was renamed Animal, paired with Hawk, and over a few months, the newly rechristened Road Warriors would gradually evolve from leather-clad village people rejects into menacing, mohawked brutes who incited terror in all their opponents and fans. The pair finally arrived in the then WWF in 1990, with a major highlight being the sight of them arriving on Gold Harleys at SummerSlam 92. They also made several brief returns to WCW throughout the 90s, before reconvening with WWE at the turn of the century. After Hawk's passing in 2003, Animal did sporadically continue his career both solo and with other partners, but tag team wrestling had never seen anything like the Road Warriors, and it probably will never again. Number 7. Tracy Smothers Former WCW, ECW, Smoky Mountain Wrestling and WWE star Tracy Smothers died on the 28th of October at the age of 58, following a long battle with lymphoma. Known primarily for a superb run in the Southern Boys, Smothers worked one of the very best tag team matches of the 1990s in a classic opposite the Midnight Express at WCW's Great American Bash. This is mandatory viewing for anyone with an interest in the form. Other runs with WWE as well as time in ECW as a member of the full-blooded Italians showcased the depth of his talent, and he was still working as recently as 2019. Number 6. Bob Ryder Veteran wrestling journalist and co-founder of Impact Wrestling, Bob Ryder passed away on the 24th of November at the age of 64. The man the company eulogised as the heart and soul of the promotion had been fighting multiple myeloma for several years. Ryder was a pioneer in internet wrestling journalism, setting up OneWrestling.com and later operating ECW's official webpage. He was also an early trailblazer of online live audio, conducting WWE's first ever internet interview at 1995's WrestleMania. Following that, Ryder held various positions within TNA as both its first and longest serving employee. Even whilst undergoing chemotherapy, he continued his work from home for the rebranded Impact up until his death last autumn. Number 5. Pat Patterson WWE's inaugural Intercontinental Champion and long-term creative consultant, Pat Patterson died on the 2nd of December of liver failure following a blood clot. He was 79 years old. Throughout the 60s and 70s, Patterson toured the major stomping grounds of the North American territories, and even made a brief foray to New Japan Pro Wrestling, before returning to the States for the World Wrestling Federation. There he became the first ever Intercontinental Champion by unifying Ted DiBiase's North American crown and his own entirely fictitious South American equivalent, winning that belt during a tournament in Rio de Janeiro that had never actually happened. For fans of a certain age though, he's best remembered for his role as one of Vince McMahon's stooges in the Monday Night Wars. King of the Ring 2000 seeing the whole thing bottom out in an evening gown match against Jared Briscoe that somehow the pair managed to make work. Though Patterson retired from full-time duties with the company in 2004, he remained a creative consultant for close friend Vince McMahon until his death. He also played a huge part in shaping the industry's sexual inclusivity when he became amongst the first wrestlers to come out as gay in the early 1970s. Number 4. Zeus 
Tommy Tiny Lister, best remembered by wrestling fans for his WWE run as Zeus, was found dead in his Marina Del Rey apartment on the 10th of December. Lister, who had been showing COVID-19 symptoms in his last week, was 62. Starring opposite Hulk Hogan in 1989's No Holds Barred, the silver screen spilled over into the squared circle, as the human wrecking machine was soon drafted into WWE to continue the movie's rivalry. After his WWE forays, Lister famously went on to play Debo in 1995's Friday and its 2000 sequel. He had further roles in The Fifth Element, The Dark Knight and Austin Powers, as well as the major distinction of being the first Klingon to make contact with humans in Star Trek Enterprise. He also found time for one final wrestling appearance, showing up in WCW in 1996 as part of the alliance to end Hulkamania. Number 3. Kevin Green Kevin Green, an NFL Hall of Famer who made numerous high-profile appearances for WCW throughout the late 90s, died on the 21st of December at the age of 58. At the time of recording, no cause of death has been given. Among sports fans, Green is best remembered as the legendary linebacker with the Pittsburgh Steelers. For wrestling fans though, it's his appearance at Clash of the Champions 32, where he supported Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage from ringside as they faced off against Ric Flair and the Giant. He even entered the ring himself though, teaming with fellow NFL Hall of Famer Steve McMichael to take on Flair and Arn Anderson. His career came to a close with defeat to the Giant at 1998's Bash at the Beach, but the biggest contribution to the industry was encouraging encouraging a friend of his to give wrestling a go. That friend, Bill Goldberg. Number 2. Danny Hodge One of the finest amateur wrestlers of all time, Danny Hodge died on the 24th of December after suffering with dementia for many years. He was 88 years old. Throughout his time in the NWA, he was virtually inseparable from the organization's junior heavyweight championship, holding it for over 10 years. Though a major car crash ended Hodge's career in 1976, he was vocally thankful to have even escaped it with his life. Number 1. Brody Lee The wrestling world was left devastated on the 26th of December when AEW announced that John Brody Lee Huber had passed away following a non-COVID related lung issue. He was just 41 years old. His death prompted an overwhelming outpouring from all corners of the wrestling world, with many people he touched paying tribute to an immense talent and an even more immense father. After catching the eye in Shikara, he became one of the most in-demand talents on the indie scene, until he was signed to a WWE developmental contract in 2012. Under the new name Luke Harper, he formed part of the Wyatt family and captured the brand's tag team title alongside Eric Rowan. On the main roster, he also became the Intercontinental Champion, but requested his release in April 2019 as he sought professional fulfillment elsewhere. The request was eventually granted later in December. Three months later, he made a dramatic AEW debut as the cultish stable The Dark Order's much-touted Exalted One. From day one, he was positioned as the main eventer his skills deserved. Within two months, he challenged for John Moxley's AEW World Championship at Double or Nothing before taking the TNT title from Cody in late August. He leaves behind a wife, Amanda, and two sons. A week following his tragic passing, AEW suspended all storylines to put on an emotional tribute show, during which his eldest son, Brody, was declared TNT Champion for life.